get together for this broadcast today. So bear with me here. I still have a couple of things I need to set up, but I thought I'd turn the camera on and just make sure that we're all together and all in the same place. Whoops. I need to turn it down. There we go. Turn it down, Richburg. All right, and I can see all of you guys jumping on. There you are. Let's double check that we're streaming over on YouTube as well. Uh, that's always important because I know a lot of you guys have really loved watching this stream over on YouTube. Uh, we love it too. We love, um, we lo oh, and I see me. I'm right there, and 10 of you are watching already. Uh, we love our YouTube platform. We um, had so much fun with you guys that were over there on Wednesday, so uh, it was awesome to have so many of you in both places. Okay, I have three screens in front of me. I've got YouTube over there, I've got Facebook over there, and right here, I've got my switcher, my controls. So bear with me, as you know, our Friday vibe on Free Tip Friday is always a little kind of loosey-goosey, which I like because it's Friday, for goodness sakes. So here we are. I have, oh, you guys are so nice. Red, I thought I'd wear some power red, fix my bangs a little bit in case my friend Mary's watching. You know, when I do my video shoots and stuff, I uh, no woman is an island. And my buddy Mary, uh, who does a lot of my show clothes and stuff, would come with me. and. Uh, I would always do, end up doing this in the middle of a shoot so that my bangs would look like this, right? And you can see her behind the camera, she'd be doing this, fix them. So I'd have to discreetly kind of go, okay, so now what we're going to do, and I'd have to kind of fix my bangs. So anyway, so Mary, if you're out there, I've just fixed my bangs. Excellent. Well, it's great to have everybody here. Tammy, you said you got a new phone. I'm going to get a new phone soon, too, for filming. Um, it's going to be fun. Um, looks like everybody's here. So, yes, so Gita uh, is off today on a little Friday adventure, so she will not be uh, on our Facebook moderating. So Janice is going to kind of go back and forth a little bit. Drea's on. I see all of you all over here on, um, on our YouTube channel, which is great. So it's great to have you all here. You know, we're working really hard on uh, making sure that this broadcast is super crisp and clean. So again, thank you so much for sticking with us with this. Looks like the um, that the stream on both YouTube and on uh, Facebook are good and strong. So let's hope it stays that way. That's great. Um, we've got some news. I'll chat a little bit about some news. A lot of you have seen it already. The Bead Shop Inspiration Team. Some of you are out there watching. Kim, Kim Golias is right there. I see her. One of our inspiration team. Um, we've got Allie, we've got Faye, we've got Danielle W, and we've got Kim G. And I'll tell you, and I'm going to try not to cry right now because, no, seriously, I'm getting a little verklempt. I'll tell you, uh, this was like a gift from Bead Heaven for you four ladies to join in on this nutty idea. You know, people always say to me when they hear me go, I have an idea, people like to run the other way, right? Because they're, oh my God, what's Kate going to get us into now? But you guys, the design team, I'm super stoked. Um, you can read about it on our blog at the bead table. Uh, it's the bead table blog, separate from the bead table um, Facebook group that we have. They all come under the umbrella of the bead table. Um, and so you're going to see these are four ladies that you've seen uh, on the bead table. Uh, some of them also came to our um, our uh, retreat in San Juan. Uh, it's where we got to be up close and personal with Kim and with Allie as well. It was great. So uh, it was pretty awesome. You know, uh, Allie said, yes, I'm going to, I'll help you kind of corral all of this talent. And so these wonderful four ladies are jumping in. And we're uh, in two weeks, not next week, but the week after, we have our first lookbook from the team. Um, it was a cool little kind of mini challenge. Uh, and so it's going to be awesome. 
uh, to see that. And you'll see them um, jump in and post really wonderful projects up on the uh, In the Bead Table uh, Facebook group. Um, and so we're really going to also highlight some of those on our blog and on our website as well. So uh, our website, of course, is beadshop.com. You'll see, Drea just posted it last night and she put it in the newsletter today uh, over on the Bead Table blog. It's a list of Allie's, um, her latest, it's called The Dance of the Damselfly. And I'm looking at the blog right now. Um, when I turn the camera over, I'll show you guys. But it's a wrap that she did. I've got all the stuff right here. It's all in here. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about also making substitutions on your own because a lot of times when we give, uh, you know, when we send out um, these components um, or even when you guys who also post on the bead table, which we love, um, sometimes people post things and they're, you know, we're out of stock, that kind of thing. So I'm going to show you um, a couple of substitutions that you can make. And to really make substitutions, make it easier for you uh, to do that as well. Um, but yeah, so we're super excited um, about this endeavor. And again, from the bottom of our hearts here at beadshop.com, we are so excited. And so many, many thanks to you four ladies for being kind of on our inaugural team. So lots of love to you. Um, okay, so I've got two things I want to accomplish with you today. Again, this kind of laid back Friday vibe. Again, I'm checking my bangs here, make sure I didn't screw them up too much. Um, we're going to talk about one that Allie uh, showed when she was here uh, for her, um, her walk down memory lane with her lookbook. She did Kate's Favorite, which I'm wearing here, and you'll see this. I'm going to take my bracelet off and we'll look at them both kind of side by side. Um, and we're going to look at that, and then we're also going to look at her um, damselfly uh, piece as well. Uh, specifically, I don't have the piece here, but you'll be able to look at it online. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about She actually sent me a photo uh, right here. She emailed me right here I've got the email and I've got the photo uh, that I want to share with you just this um, putting this uh, section together so that's what we're gonna do um, so I'm gonna move this camera around and let's get the proverbial show on the road all right here we go I'm coming in and we're turning we're turning you can see our little battening on the walls there there we go. So, whoops, come on camera. <laughs> there we go, there it is. Bring this over, push this up, and we'll center everything here. So everybody can see what we've got going. I'm also gonna pull the camera up a little bit higher, so bear with me here as I pull this up. There we go. And let me get that wire out of the way. That's not so pretty. And let me see if I can adjust the lighting just slightly. So we've got a little more. I want to get rid of that shadow there. There we go. That doesn't look too bad. I think we're in pretty good shape. I'm going to push the camera down just a little so I've got room to work. <clears throat> and we are ready. You can see the corner of the iPad there. I'll get it out of the, out of the scene here in just a second. And let me make sure that my Facebook and my YouTube are up as well. Okay, <clears throat> so you guys, um, it's great. You know, I, I'm telling you, I love this Friday vibe. I don't know about you guys. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if you knew this about me, but I'm, my mom knows. My mom is watching. I'm a little bit of a procrastinator. Ask my mom about those sixth grade reports that uh, I would always do at the last minute. Um, but uh, so I love the vibe of Friday, even if I'm not completely prepared. It's okay. You guys are hanging in there with me, right? There we go. The things that happen on a Friday morning here. Let me see if I can turn the brightness. It doesn't look too bad. It looks a little dark, 
So I'm gonna try and turn that brightness up just a little bit if I can. Uh, let's see, let me see. No, that I don't like that one, sorry. Let me take that off. Sorry, sorry. How can I make that not do that? <clears throat> nope, that's a little too dark. Hang on, let me pop it up just a little. Now it's funny. I'm gonna take it off of this thing. It's a little, um, <laughs> now what have I done? Oh, what have I done? <clears throat> Pardon me, let me see if I can make it not look that way. Let's see, maybe go back to zero. Um, yeah, why is this, why is this kind of funky? I don't want, there we go, back to normal. There we go, that's what I want. <clears throat> and I want the exposure to be up just a hair. There we go. I think this is okay. Normal. Well, that should look, yeah, that's a little bright. Sorry, you guys, I'm trying to make this um, be as not as just a little bit brighter and it's raining here today so it's not quite as uh, bright as we want it to be here let's see yeah I can see it's still dark bear with me here you guys I'm gonna get it a little brighter I know it's too dark I know if I didn't have rain we go back to normal here, exposure. Let me try that and let me go up on the brightness just a hair. Bear with me here again. There we go, I'm getting it now. There we go, that's a little bit better, I think. All right, yep, I like that. Ta-da! I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so thanks for bearing with me for that horrible camera work. Here, but uh, you know I don't have brand one on Fridays I just have me and my fingers clicking around on there so that's what we've got all right so let's take a look let's bring these to the center and uh, let's take a look at what we've got I'm taking a bracing drink of coffee here before I do anything else right it's still morning I can still drink coffee all right so kids, this is the compare and contrast, the two pieces of uh, the Ali's Compadres. Well, or she calls it um, kind of Kate's favorite. Uh, we like to call it Kate's favorite, kind of blown up here. Because she used, and you guys know this one here, Kate's favorite. It's the one I wear all the time. It's the uh, shadows, you know, my favorite bead. Uh, homemade button here. And I used a two millimeter leather. So Allie used this as her inspiration. This is a three wrap right here. Uh, and then this guy here, um, she did really the same way. Each of these strands that she's braided, one, two, and three, are made just like this single one, okay? And then braided, okay? So then you can see, and I wanted to turn this over because I thought that the way that Ali connected this was pretty ingenious and I wanted to pull over our um, compadres project as well and you know when you um, when you see um, the um, compadres when you go to our project page and you uh, you look on our different projects that we have you know the ones that we haven't done that often because they're all the way down at the bottom. Okay, so if you see, uh, you'll as you scoot down, uh, you'll see compadres. I should actually check. I should have brought it up with me, but I didn't. So let me actually go to beadshop.com. You can do that just like me. You go to beadshop.com, our uh, website, right? And you go to uh, projects. And, of course, Karen is so good, she's put compadres all the way up in the upper left-hand corner, so it's there, so you click on it. And so you see all of our older compadres, many of which I have here. And you can see, um, 
here this I love these and I'll be honest I this is on my list to make I have never actually made one isn't that nuts I know I I should I love them um, and it's essentially uh, almost exactly the same as what Ellie did here and so I don't want you to find that this is daunting okay this is just essentially three wrap bracelets right graded together that's it really and you need a little bit of extra length because of the braid because the braid takes up some space okay and that's it really and notice the closure and i'm going to talk about the closures on both of these what i did for kate's favorite and you guys i wear this all the time so it's a little manky it's a little grim but that's all right you know again it's friday vibe it's real life bracelet here so the Kate's favorites over here on the left, all I did was I closed it via silk wrap and I silk wrapped it with some 0.5 millimeter leather there. Um, I didn't do any macrame, I didn't do anything fancy. I just ended it and I kind of figured out how long I needed for the button and then tied a knot on the other side and then cut it off. That's it, couldn't be easier. And you can see, I've been wearing this for over a year, you can see that that button loop is kind of stretched a little bit. So leather does stretch sometimes, just a little. Um, so that's uh, so that's a story there. So that's that closure. You can see with Allie, this Kate's favorite on steroids that she did, um, what, what she did was she brought everything in, and I love the way she did this. She did some macrame closure, then she put on this pony bead. And are you, um, I don't know, if you don't know, I'm sure a lot of you use the pony. I've got some boxes of our beads here, so bear with me while I kind of rifle through and grab one of the pony beads here. Um, this bead is good for so many applications. I've got it right here has a really big hole uh, in the in the center. There it is right there. Let me get kind of tight. So anytime that you have to bring a bunch of pieces together, right? And then um, and then you need something that has a pretty large hole. This is a really good one. So that inner diameter and it'll show you let me get my let me make this a little bit bigger. Let me get my my good old caliper here, my digital caliper. And the bead itself is about, I don't know, It's this one might be a little bit shorter. Sometimes they vary. It's between four and five millimeters in height. And then that inside hole diameter, let me see if I can make that go. You did know that the one on the outside here is for measuring the inside uh, diameter of something, right? If you didn't, you do now. The inside of that hole is a little bit bigger. It's 3.8 millimeters, so it's pretty big, okay? And it's great. Um, I, I love the speed. I use it a lot. And Janice just commented over on the YouTube side that Pony is one of her favorites, and it really is. I do, I love the speed a lot. And it's brass. This is the natural uh, brass coating that it comes in, just like the shadows. It's a natural brass. The plating on the others, like here's the copper. Let me get the copper out. Can you see that? There it is. There's the copper one. This one's a little funky. It looks like it's been sliced off. Let me get a different pony here. So let me do that. Okay. Okay, there we go. Yeah, how's everybody's feet? Can we see the, is the coming through? I know that Lynn was saying she was having a few issues, but I, everything is going uh, off without a hitch on my end. So it could be uh, your connection is there. So if you have issues with your feed jumping in and out or whatever, jump in and out of the uh, application, especially on Facebook. You can go in, close out of Facebook, and go back in. Sometimes that helps. And also, if you are um, watching a streaming uh, broadcast, 
make sure that if you have Wi-Fi available that you're connected to Wi-Fi so that your streaming will be as fast as it can be rather than just the data on your phone. It should be, um, it should be a little bit easier for you. So see, here are the ponies uh, that I was talking about. This one here, let me go a little bit tighter here. We've got that copper and then we've got this plated, uh, the plated copper next to the natural brass. And the plating, you guys, uh, really lasts a good long time. I love it. Um, I use the plated beads all the time and they really have a really good uh, shelf life. I haven't had any issues with them coming off. So, um, so they're good. Uh, I really love them. So back to the closure though, before I went off on my soliloquy on the ponies. So the way that Allie finished this off is she braided, 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 added a little bit of macrame to close it off, came through, sent that leather all the way through the pony, macrame, 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 all the way down, sent it through, tied that knot, and you can see how the tails, she kept the tails, and I love the way that she treated this closure, okay? She had the two tails come together. She just strung some of these six aughts. Uh, that six aught, I've got the list right here, so bear with me. It's that variegated blue crystal lined uh, AB, um, which is gorge. I love it. Um, and then she used the regular shadow. And then she tied them together right here. So good, right? So it has, um, it has some movement but the tails are kind of corralled in there. So you don't have six tails waving all over the place. You've got the look of six, but the manageability of three. I love them. I heart it so much. I think it's great. Um, so I love the way that this closes. On the compadres, let me turn this over. You can see uh, the compadres are closed with a silk wrap this time with a one millimeter leather. Okay, I had a 0.5 millimeter leather over here with mine. And then uh, it looks like uh, the macrame starts down here. Macrame, macrame, macrame. It looks like we've got, uh, we probably ended one of the macrames, one of the strands in here. Macrame, macrame, macrame. And then um, opened it up for the button macrame them together and tied the knot. If you go to the compadres, there's some great, um, there's some great uh, instructions there. Or as my friend Beth likes to say, some great destructions. It's all there, okay. Um, so, uh, but I think it's a lovely way uh, to close this. Um, and let me close this for you here. I think it's just gorgeous. And it kind of has kind of a cool Southwestern vibe to it. It's really gorgeous. Um, I love it. Um, it's just such a pretty bracelet. I really, it's a beautiful design. Um, and so I wanted to show you though, I'm going to connect to the button here. We use the Rococo, the um, sapphire and gold one. And you can see that the um, loop on this button is kind of small. So I wanted to show you how Allie actually connected these um, because I thought it was pretty clever the way that she did it. Okay, so I'm gonna just put it here, put it here, get a little bit tighter, and then I'm gonna show you what we do. So she used a one millimeter. Allie used the metallic pyrite. I grabbed this actually, um, might be not the metallic pyrite. I just grabbed this out of our leather scrap bin um, and I didn't even see what it was that I grabbed. I was just grabbing with wild abandon. Um, but that one might be, I'm going to look, I'm looking it up. You know, when you search things on our website, you do know that over to the left hand side, you can sort by color and by size and all of that. So when you want to find something really super quickly, uh, you can. 
Uh, and so that's what I'm doing now. Uh, I guess maybe that is, I don't know if that's metallic pyrite or not. I don't think it is. Um, I'm gonna look, I'm looking. It's metallic bronze, see, I knew. That's what it is. So you could just as easily, uh, if for some reason we're ever out of the metallic pyrite, metallic bronze would be a great, um, a great substitute for this one. And this is one millimeter, okay? So the way that she started, or at least the way that I'm interpreting that she started, but I think she did, and I'm just gonna cut a short piece, right? I'm not gonna work with all of these crazy long tails. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm gonna get my snips here. So let's clip it. And what Allie did was she came through with the two, and the two should fit. Again, it's kind of out of my vision range, so bear with me a second while I struggle. Goes through, and then it comes through here, and that's the lark's head, okay? We don't want it twisted. We just want it to come in nicely. All right, so see the ears, what I'm calling the ears off the lark's head? Let me get in real tight so you can see that, okay? What she then did was I'm going to turn it over here because I think she did it on this side. What she then did was she added her buddies, the other two, here and here. So let me add, let me add the buddies. And I think she, um, she didn't even add them with a lark's head or anything. They just come through. So let me cut this one, make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it short again, not super long. Okay. And I'm going to cut two. There's one. I think the light just went on with Kim Crawford. <laughs> right? Clip. And I'll put it through on that side. Okay. So see how that's coming out of one ear? I'm calling them ears. They kind of look like, you know, little handles, whatever. I'm gonna call them ears. Oh, Kim said she did. I could feel your epiphany all the way across the US, right? So now here, here's the other ear, and I'm putting it through, okay? So we've got all three. Can you see? This one's here, this one's here, whoops. I'm grabbing the right ones. And the center is what has the lark's head. Can you see that? So now I'm going to tighten it up. I'm going to tighten it just a little bit so you guys can see what happens. The lark's head itself just kind of slides. You kind of have to persuade it. There it goes. We wanted to give it, as Jana says, a little bit of air so it's not moving around too much. But then what Allie did was she started over here and will macrame. I'm just going to cut a short little piece because I want to show you this because I think it is so terribly clever. Terribly, terribly clever. I think what Allie used on the recipe, she used regular Ceylon in gold. I think I just grabbed regular Ceylon maybe in sable maybe is what I grabbed. Um, doesn't matter. Whatever you have. This is just for demo purposes. So I'm going to grab this one. Okay. I'm going to cut, I don't know, six. That's not six inches. Maybe eight to ten inches. Something like that. Just so you guys can see it. And we could um, uh, kind of put this all on a board. But I'm just going to kind of wing it a little bit. And just give myself a little bit of macrame here. Um, we have many a skill builder. What I am going to do though is I'm going to clip it together with some clampers that I have sitting right here. Um, we have a great macrame skill builder um, that's really very easy and wonderful to follow. It's just the flat macrame square knot, right? I just want to establish this here. We're going to be doing a lot of this macrame on Facebook Live coming up next week. 
because we're going to be doing Bollywood, a new Bollywood version, and the Bollywood originator, I told you I would tell you on Friday who my special guest is going to be, our Bollywood originator, which is Brittany. Brittany is coming for a visit. I know that so many of you started your bead shop journey learning with Janice and Nicole and Brittany right when those videos first started coming up. And so we're so pleased to have Brittany joining us uh, on Facebook Live, on Bead Shop Live next week. So I'm very excited. Janice has made the sample, <clears throat> and the sample is so amazing. Um, and Dre is just saying you can find all of the skill builders and everything for this project right on our uh, project page on beadshop.com. And yes, <clears throat> that is correct. You can. So see here, I'm gathering the other two, uh, the other two ears. I don't want to gather them too tightly because I don't want to pull everything out of whack here. Let me again, let me get a little closer to my field of vision. Sorry, bear with me here just a second. There we go. And I'm going to use my clamper to clamp it all together. There we go. And I'm sure she's going to have so many tricks to share. I can't wait to see and hear everything she's going to share with us next week. <clears throat> and we're just going to come in and we're just going to macrame this. Okay, so I go underneath and up and through. And this is really how you establish everything for the one that Allie did. And so around and under. And you know, you could make this with anything, any seed bead, any four, four millimeter fire polish, just about anything goes. You can make them tiny. You could make three strands of 11 knots and you could use 0.5 millimeter leather. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be kind of dainty and small. Um, you know, just you put on your imagination ca cap and just create. You know, it's only beads, you guys, right? Who cares? If it doesn't work out, you'll just cut it up and give it another college try, okay? So I'm gonna kind of clip all of these together so everything is out of the way and I'll show you what I've done, okay? And then I'll put it over here. And this over here. There we go. And then she started also by um, macrame so that, um, let me turn this around. There we go. She started off by macrame <clears throat> a little bit with this one as well, that center one. Let me get in really tight and I'm gonna get my fingers out of the way so you guys can see this, okay? If you're watching this on your phone, you know you can take a screenshot too while you're watching, okay? Um, at least on your Apple phone, you can. You can always take a screenshot of this um, while you're doing it, or if you're replaying the video uh, and you get to a part that you really wanna see again, just hit the pause take a screenshot and save it to your photos. It'd be a great way to archive um, a shot like this that you'd like. I'm gonna actually see if I can take a screenshot of this as we speak. Let me see. Let me do this. I've got this. I've done this. And yep, there's my screenshot. Perfect. You can see, I just did it. I'll show you guys. See, I just came in. There we are in real time. Oh, whoops, well, I didn't show it went away already, but I just did my quick screenshot. So it's a good way if you um, if you want to take any photos during the broadcast, right? It's kind of a kind of a cool little trick. Okay. So uh, so there it is. Um, so that's how that's done. And you can see Android does it too. Great. Awesome. And on a Kindle. I love it. So take those screenshots, save them to your 
you know, make your own little kind of notes uh, about this, design notes about this uh, piece. And you can see here it is, it looks just like that. You just start laddering. Um, I think Allie did this, the traditional two, um, uh, two tail laddering method, back and forth, back and forth, coming all the way around and continuing to go, continuing to go. And then on this side, she just ended each one um, with a little bit of uh, macrame. And it looks like she did those two together there. It looks like she macrame these two together over here to bring them together as one. And then uh, macrame uh, over the top, macrame, macrame, and uh, close it off. That's it, that's all she wrote. So I think it's a pretty cool, um, it's a pretty cool little closure and a pretty cool way to, um, to, uh, to make this piece. So that's this. So I wanted to share that with you. <clears throat> we don't have a ton, well, we've got a little bit of time left, I don't know. Uh, I wanna switch gears for the moment. I'm gonna push all of this aside. Again, you can find everything about this project um, if you go to beadshop.com, go to projects. It's right up there uh, on the upper left-hand corner. If you're watching this later, it may have scooted down a little bit, but click on compadres and you'll see all of our wonderful compadres bracelets as well as this piece of alleys, okay? So I'm going to move this aside, move it all over, okay? And uh, let me dump out what I've got here. Um, Maggie just asked, she said, um, how about some different shades of leather to kick it up? Yes, by all means, you could make each one a different color uh, and do it that way. I think it would look terrific. I think that's a great idea, um, super fun. So this is, uh, if you've seen it, and let me go over to the blog. I'm gonna bring my computer screen in here so you guys can see. Uh, I'm actually gonna just do this, bear with me here just a second. And I wanna make sure that it's nice and big for you guys here, okay. So here, as I bring my computer screen in, we're at the bead table blog, okay? And if you just type in, you can find it on our um, homepage uh, at beadshop.com. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that there's a link to the blog. But if you just, um, uh, let me get this from behind it, there we go. If you just, um, Google or whatever search engine you use, uh, the bead table blog, you'll find it, okay? It'll come up and uh, you can just click on it, bookmark it, okay? And there's a lot of great stuff that happens on the blog, but you can see why <laughs> this is my desktop, my laptop computer. I wanna do this, laptops, my Apple doesn't do that. Um, but you can see, maybe if I click on it, it'll get a little bit bigger, there it is. You can see Ellie's beautiful piece. She um, uh, posted this up on uh, the Bead Table um, Facebook group, and we just all super fell in love with it. She started with uh, her mix. It's the Kaleidoscope mix for April 2019. If you haven't bought the mix yet, you guys, I don't know what you're waiting for. Get over there because uh, we had a bunch and people are picking them up right and left. So I would not delay on getting your mix. It's really, it's a beautiful alley design mix. And then she did this, I'm gonna click over. The the photo she used as inspiration was this really gorgeous um, photo that Faye um, posted in the, um, in the group. And it's by Canadian artist Stephen Hall, I think is his name, which is really cool. And then there's some uh, really nice up close and personal photos of it. And here's what we like to call the project map. Ellie also did kind of a traditional project map photo for this. Let me get down a little bit closer so you can see it. You can see it all laid out. What I wanted to share with you in particular today is this connection. See how there's a lark's head knot on this side and a lark's head knot on this side and you're like wait a minute how the heck did she do that well I'm gonna show you and she's a genius so 
Let me get my laptop out of the way. Before I get into that, though, with that one, I wanted to talk to you a little bit, just real quick, about subbing, about substitutions, okay? We have a lot of beads here at beadshop.com, and it is a constant juggle and struggle to keep everything in stock, right? And sometimes it's not us not ordering, right? We really try and keep on up, up on it. But sometimes, especially in the world of glass beads, and those of you who have been buying glass beads uh, for a while know this, but beads also in general, you know, it's like yarn. Buy everything you need for the project because theme things might, um, uh, things kind of go in and out sometimes. So, uh, so I wanted to show you these guys. This is the one that Allie used originally. And we have we have some in stock. We've got more coming. Um, this is the uh, Pastel Bordeaux Super Duo. Okay? I just went over to the wall this morning and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to find a sub because we've got to have a, we've got to have something in for it. So I got this Vega on Tanzanite. And I'm just going to dump it out. So you guys can see, I also got, um, I got a second one, the one that we have listed. I actually have this Vega on Tanzanite, but we listed this other one in the blog, which I think is the perfect match. This is the Halo Magenta. I'm going to dump this out. You guys will look at it. Okay, let me get this. Okay, look at these purple. Ginger has gotten me, I, you know, my grandpa, my granddad, my granddad, Joe, my mom's dad, his favorite color was purple, my granddad, right? And uh, I bought him one year for Easter. I bought him a purple shirt. He just loved purple. So wherever I uh, I see purple, it reminds me of Joe Ferrani right there. So let me get in kind of tight here so you guys can see it. This is the one that um, Allie called for. It was the Pastel Bordeaux, okay? And it's listed on the blog. This one is also listed. This is the Halo Magenta. It's a pretty good color match for it. I know it's a little hard to see true colors over here on the screen, so forgive me for that. And then here's also this Vega on Tanzanite over here. So you could mix these up even if you wanted to, to have kind of a kind of a tone on tone mix would work really nice. But don't, what I'm trying to get to, you guys, is don't be afraid to sub, right? Don't be afraid to substitute because sometimes it just doesn't happen. And we don't want you to be, like, you know, sad, have sad face about, you know, oh, man, they don't have what I need. Just go and sort by color over on the, um, uh, over on the, website and just pick another color pick another purple pick you know if it's green pick another green you know it's all right you can just do it it's okay i know the color is a little it's not as as just so perfect as these purples are but you can see them uh over on the blog karen's photography is amazing i also wanted to show you these were i'm going to try to mix these up because i have to put them back in the tube and I actually want to get other things done today. So there we go. I'm going to put that one there and that one. I know. Wear your triangles, Kate. Kate, use your triangles. Well, all right. I'll, I'll do that. Let me get them. I've got them sitting over here. Right going through. Um, there we go. Look at that. Makes it a little bit easier. Let me get these guys in there. Corral these beads before there's an incident. All right. Margaret saying lilac, the color and smell of spring. Indeed. Those of you who know my lilac is my favorite flower, along with peonies, my two favorites in the whole world. I love lilacs. This is, um, and they're coming back in. But this bead has been out of stock with our supplier for months, literally months. And these beads, you know, they're made in the Czech Republic right and it's not like a factory that churns out you know it's not like an assembly line that churns out you know 20 cars a minute or things like that these are still check glass beads are still made 
in the way that they were made. I mean, a few things have been automated, but they're still made in the same way that they were made 50, 75, 100 years ago, right? So when the run of the bead color is done, it's done. It doesn't come back until the cycle of the colors has been cycled through. So this one that Ali used, which I just j'adore, this is called, um, oh, you know what? It's not, this is mirror. <laughs> we didn't even have a pearl coat teal um, on the wall. So this is, this is actually the mirror one. Let me uh, see if maybe someone can beat me to linking it, but let me go to tiles. But it's just making my point about, um, about uh, substituting. I don't have Allie's piece here. So maybe it is, is it um, pearl coat teal? But I think what I pulled, I pulled something else. I'll, I'll see what I've got here. Let me go to, I'm sorting on the left hand side, sorting by type here. And I'm gonna go to Checkmates Tiles. There we go. This is mirror teal is what this one is. So delicious. Okay. Um, and yeah, they're slowly coming back in. You can see so many are sold out and our hands are just tied. We're like, oh my God, when are these coming back in? But they're slowly making their way back in. But so this, I just adore this, the mirror teal. But the one that we actually subbed for it or the one that's actually in there is the pearl coat teal. Okay. Which we have neither of right now. But what we do have, which I think also looks kind of amazing, we have the gold. Uh, this is the matte metallic flax, and this is the matte metallic copper. Both gorgeous. They both kind of have that shine to it. I'll give the bracelet a little bit of a different personality, but not so much. Not so much that you'd notice, right? Um, this one also, if you wanted to soften it up, I love this one. This is the Rosaline, the gold marble Rosaline. And it looks really clear on the broadcast, but there is a nice gold coating on this and it has kind of a lovely light pink to it. So it's gorgeous. I know all of you are like, we love the teal. I know, I love the teal too. But we've got Aqua Twilight, which, or Twilight Aquamarine, which would be beautiful. So just go through and pick a color that you dig. The matte iris green, that would look gorgeous. So, you know, and in the meantime, um, this gold marble Capri Blue is so pretty. I know I need to stop looking at all of these and get back to the task at hand. But put yourself on the notification list for these. You know, if we could, we would have these stocked 24-7, um, but beads are just, um, they're just sometimes kind of transitory, right? Um, she also uses the really amazing dragonfly pebble from uh, Green Girl, again, which you guys loved so much this morning, it was snapped up fast, and we actually um, are out of it already. Um, but. Green Girl is working on it and we'll be getting those back in soon. But what I also love uh, to use, this one's called Bali Dancer. Um, and it's a slider, okay, like this. So in Allie's piece, she has in the middle of this section. So I'm actually gonna set this up. Let me show you this photo. She sent me this photo. So let me put this, bring this to the fore, okay, right here. Can you see here how there's a Jardin ring there and a Jardin ring there, okay? And what she did, can you see how there's a lark's head knot here, a lark's head knot here, and then what she just used to illustrate the center, these are roller beads, so you could use rollers too in place of that big dragonfly. What we wanted was this Bali Dancer in place of it. So you could use anything as long as the hole fits. Allie uses the um, 1.5 millimeter um, leather. So as long as all both of those strands fit through. So what she did, let me show you, things are getting a little messy here, but uh, the leather that she used, she used the metallic maroon, which is this one here and then she used the metallic purple. I also grabbed, this is the metallic, I think that's the metallic teal, I think is what that is. Um, 
you know, you could do, the bracelet has three sections. You could do all three sections uh, a little bit differently. Yeah, that's the metallic teal. It's really pretty, I think. Um, so, you know, just, you do you. You kind of go, um, go with the flow about what you like. But let me show you how she did the center. So she likes to work, I grabbed it. What Allie likes to do is work on a macrame board for this part. So I got the macrame board right here, okay? So here's this. Let me get this out of the way, and I'm gonna push that to the center, okay? And so what she emailed me, let me read it real quick. She said, um, hey Kate, I was cleaning up my mess from the kaleidoscope bracelet and thought you could use this tip for Friday. She said, I often forget to string on the splice transition bead before I make the lark's head knot. So what she said was, this is how I get set up. I make all the splices first, let the glue dry, and then go back and do the laddering. I add maybe a quarter inch in length so to the leather to accommodate the laddering, but it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference if you're using relatively small beads, six millimeters or less. So let me show you that. So I'm gonna get my, here's my, those, my Jardin rings. You don't have to use Jardin either. We have a ton of different rings that you could choose from, right? Um, if this one isn't your thing. I'm gonna use, uh, I guess I'll use this metallic purple. Come on here, and I'm gonna measure, the way I'm gonna measure it, let's see if my section is gonna be about this long. I don't know, I'll measure it for you so you can kind of see. If this section of my bracelet, let's just say to make it easy, is gonna be about six inches, okay? So I'm gonna double it over, so now that's 12 inches, plus I need a little bit more for the um, for the lark's head, so I'll add like another inch. So I'm gonna cut 13 inches, maybe a little bit, and she says a little bit for the splice, about a quarter of an inch to accommodate for laddering. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut 14 inches, just so that I have enough, okay? Then, I'm gonna clip this away. Where's my, where's my clip up? There it is. Okay. Now what she does is this. <clears throat> We're gonna find, kind of find the center here. And let's go ahead and string on Bolly Dancer. Where did you go, Bolly Dancer? There it is. We're just gonna string this guy on. So Bolly Dancer is there in the middle. Okay, so now I'm gonna lark's head knot. Actually, I don't need to string that one on quite yet. I'll lark's head knot this one. Then I'll string it on. No need to fight it at this juncture. Okay, so see how that's on? Let me measure. That's kind of close, right? Yeah. That's good, I have at least three inches there. Now I'll put on Bolly Dancer here. And I'll Lark's Head Knot this side. <coughs> Pardon me, excuse my sneeze, sorry about that. I could feel it coming on and sometimes there's nothing you can do but sneeze, so that's what I did. Um, so now I'm gonna do the Lark's Head on the other side, so I'm gonna try and get that on there at about six inches, <clears throat> about there. So that's when I'm gonna fold it over, put this through, and go all the way through there, okay? Whoops, sorry, let me get it closer to my field of vision. Bear with me here just a second. It goes through. There we go. And all of this comes through the knot. Comes through the loop, rather, to make the knot. Now let me adjust it, because again, this needs to be six inches. It's 
it's about right, I think. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be six inches, but that's just kind of what I'm aiming for. That looks like, with the rings, looks about right. This one came undone. Unruly little, ungrateful little suckers, aren't they? Let me make sure that's right. And then what she did in the photo that I thought was clever, because you can see this wants to move all over the place, she uses T-pins, and she'll T-pin it down. She kind of does it this way, kind of at a really hard angle, so it doesn't move as much. And again, I don't want to twist it going the wrong way. And it is, see how there's a twist in there? So I don't, I don't want that. So let me just make sure that I don't have the twist. And that's coming in on that side. There we go. Let me Lark's head it again. Come out. I put it in there. That's it's, it's really tight, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I can't get that out. There we go. All right. Oh, wow. That was that was a lot. Let's see. Let's get this through. Again, making sure that that the tail is coming out on the same side, and I'll show you what I'm doing here. There we go. See how these are both coming out here, so they're not crossing over. That's what I was. Um, that's what I was having trouble with. Don't don't unfurl yet, please. We put this T pin in, okay? And then let me make sure that this isn't going to go anywhere. And walk it down a little bit. And let's see if it's about six inches. Yeah, that looks about right. Looks good. Let me corral this one down so I don't have this movement. There we go. I know I need more hands, right? There we go. So see that? That's how it needs to look. Let me go, for those of you who are screenshotting, let me show you that right there. And so this is going to come together here. So what she's going to do is she's going to make the splice <clears throat> first. So my guess is she would just slide this up like so. Let's make this. You remember how Allie does that splice? I'm going to cut it here and see if I can get it to... I'm going to get it a little bit closer to me. Just bear with me here just a second. I'm going to do that angle cut, a good nice angle cut here, if I can see. So sorry, it's a little bit out of camera view, but I'll get it back into camera view in just a hot minute. And this one, I'm going to kind of bring it around. And I know, okay, that splice is going to go there. So we're going to come in and cut that. I don't know if you can see it. Cut that angle. That looks right, right? So let me get our glue and our baggie. And yeah, Diane was asking, one of the Lark's Heads loop is up on the top and I have the other below. It, it doesn't. It actually, I think it actually needs to be that way so that these ends line up together. I, I don't think it matters at all. It'll just have a little, you know, one side will look um, a little bit different than the other. But this is all kind of disguised up in the wrap. So, you know, it's, it's okay. So I'm going to add a little bit of that glue there. 
gosh, it's getting also hard to squeeze this zap glue package or tube. Let me wipe this tip off. It's kind of sad also. Did I prep my zap glue beforehand? No. There we go. Too busy moving like lightning over here at beadshop.com to check the zap. There we go. So see those right there on the splice, on the two ends. Gently lay them down. Don't worry, you're the boss of this glue. It's all right. Get it in, get it together, and splice them so that they glue, so that the little diagonals are touching. And I'm gonna press it together With my, with my baggie. I'm actually gonna free up one side so that it's not pulling it too much. Oh, gosh. Let me see if I can get this out here. Sorry, I need to get it a little closer to me to pull it out. There we go, gosh. It's two pins. There we go, let's make sure that this hasn't Dried too much. Zap goes quickly, quickly. So I'm going to add a little more glue there. Allie just did this splice so uh, easily. I'm struggling a little bit with this, but that's okay. You understand the struggle, right? It's not all perfect right out of the gate. A little more glue there. I'm trying to keep my hand from becoming one big mass of zap glue. There we go. Just hold it there. Hold that splice. Hold that thought. There we go. I'm going to bring it together underneath that baggie. And that's great. Drea just um, linked it there. And for those of you on YouTube, uh, if you're not over here on the, the Facebook, if you go over to Allie's episode, Allie's lookbook episode, Janice, I mean, um, Drea outlined the splice in the episode notes. And it has really good step by step photos there. So you'll be able to follow along and get that splice because I am obviously not able to splice this very well right on air today. Come on. Come on now. There we go. So we would let this, we would let that dry. And she um, probably, I want to be very careful with this, has the splice somewhere in the middle, um, maybe. Maybe she doesn't. Maybe she has it, maybe she's laddered over it. Um, what you could do to kind of keep this nice and together is we could use just some fine, you know, fine weight. And she may have done that because the bead in Cynthia's project, that dragonfly bead, is pretty, um, it's pretty big. There we go. And we can just macrame over the top of it to hold that splice right in place. Again, she says she lets it sit. But I'm throwing caution to the wind, just so you can see how I might do this. Come on. There we go. And we would just macrame this right over the splice to make it nice and tidy and secure. 
And then we'd slide either the bead, in Allie's case, that big Cynthia bead she used in the photographic sample. She used the roller beads, which look great. Um, anything that's large enough that will cover all of this. I love this Bali Dancer because then you'll be able to see let me slide this over. Then you'll be able to see the macrame. There we go. Right on the inside there. Okay. And if I turn it over. So then uh, what she said was uh, she lets the glue dry and then she goes back to do the laddering. All right. Um, and that's it. And she said for the openings here, let me get rid of this. You could add just a little bit of length, but she said it doesn't really make much difference um, if we're using relatively small beads to ladder. Okay. And so you could start your macrame here with really long tails and use those tails to ladder. Start another bit of macrame underneath here and use those tails to ladder here, right? And then you just macrame it off there and macrame it off there. Okay. So I love I think that's a pretty clever way to have the lark's head knots on both of those ends. I hope that was pretty clear for you guys. I'm going to show you, you can go right on to the blog, like we said, the bead table blog, um, and you can see, uh, let me see if I can find where I put the blog photo, um, and I'll show you one more time um, how that looks. I'll put it on screen. So again, bear with me here just a moment while I pull it up. So here it is. And I'm going to get really right down there. You can see this center section. Um, it looks like Allie's lark's head knot. Maybe she maybe she did twist it. Maybe she didn't she didn't mind, or maybe it doesn't matter if it's on the top or on the bottom. Um, but see how the lark's head is here. The lark's head is here. Here's the dragonfly bead. It was slid to the side macrame macrame underneath, bring some tails out that way, do another set of macrame, bring the tails out that way, and ladder, and that's it. And you can see just a little bit of macrame on both of those ends there to close it up. I think it's a really clever way of um, connecting with two loops, uh, one on each side. So really nicely done. Ale Mori, really nicely done. Let me get back to where we are here. Okay, so kids, that's that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed these tips on Free Tip Friday. Here's this one here. I'll put this over here so you guys can see the the connection for all three of these. I'll take a I'll take a photo of these and I'll add them to the uh, to the bracelet page, the, the blog page there. We'll take a nice one. There we go. I just want to kind of put it out like this so you guys can really see it. I'll take a photo so you guys can see it too. So there's that guy. And here's our friend right here. So that's it. I hope you guys, um, oh, I missed everybody's comments there. It was stuck, so I hope that was good. Yep, good, good, good. Um, great, and yeah, uh, Drea, I'll put them on the blog uh, as well. I've got them, um, I've got them all here, so I'll, uh, I'll put those out and add them to the blog so you guys can, can see those. Um, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we didn't delve too deeply into the laddering parts and stuff. You've seen me do that a million times, but I thought that both of these tips, you could, um, you know, apply these to your own designs um, really, really well. I think it would look really great. So, um, so those will be good. Um, Michelle is asking, as I'm kind of putting things around, Michelle is asking, when are the curated kits coming out? Well, Michelle, we have something launching 
a little later this month, another Kate mix. It's kind of halfway between a Kate mix and a curated box. I think you're going to love it, so stay tuned to the social media. I'll give everybody plenty of warning. It's coming, so um, so bear with me here as I move the camera. Let me see how smoothly I can do it. There I am. Great. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see me, and so I'm not so up close and personal. Let me scoot on back. It's a little low. Let me lift it. There we are. <laughs> My hair is a total mess. Let me fix me. There we go. All right. I'm going to push it back just a little. A little close. There we are. All righty. Okay, so that was it. I hope that you had good times. I had fun with it. Um, I was a little, forgive me again for being a little bit late to the broadcast today. Fridays are always crazy here because we're trying to finish up for the week. But again, we've got that free tip Friday vibe, which I always like. So um, we've got some great things coming up for you guys. As I said, our special guest next week, Brittany, is going to be here. And she's going to be doing a new Bollywood project with me that actually Janice created. Um, we have a couple of... Um, the, the regular Bollywood knots. We've added some things to the center. We've got some other, uh, we've got another cool take on the knot um, as well. So I think you guys are really going to love it. Um, you'll see that project will be up sometime on Tuesday and then it'll be all ready for Facebook or Bead Shop Live on Wednesday. Then the following week, I've got something fun. Uh, we've got some new beads that are launching um, that you guys are going to like. And I've made kind of this what I think is the perfect bracelet for spring that I'm gonna to add to my stack. I really, really love it. So I think you're gonna like that. So we've got a bunch of stuff coming up. We've also, Emily and I are working on some cool things that we're gonna be uh, playing around with. Emily will be back um, in May to do uh, a seed bead school. So we've got that going. So we've got a lot of fun stuff shaken out um, for April and into May. So have a fantastic weekend, you guys. Again, check out the blog, The Bead Table. We've got the introduction to the Bead Shop design team, which is really just going to be great. Check that blog every Thursday this month in April. It's April 2019 right now, in case you're watching this on replay. Uh, for years to come, you'll go back a little bit ways in that blog. But um, you'll see uh, a post introducing you to each of our design team members. Again, we're so grateful to have them. And we've got kind of a mini lookbook from the team coming uh, the third week of April. So uh, that's, it's gonna be good times. Uh, it's gonna be, I think they're already churning out some amazing things. Go on, if you haven't joined already, you can join us in our private Facebook group, also called The Bead Table. Um, you can go ahead and join, answer three quick questions to keep out spammers, and we would love to have you join us. Um, so that's it. That's what I've got. Check your newsletters this week. Um, another plug, if you have not joined our newsletter list, go over to beadshop.com, put in your name, your email address. All of that information stays private to us. We don't rent it, sell it, give it away, throw it in the street. We don't do any of that. We keep that all very, very private. Your privacy is really, really important to us because we've got some other things brewing. I know that you're wondering uh, what we're gonna be doing in that classroom area right over there. Classes are coming. Really great filmed content are coming. And you know I've been testing torches. You know fire is coming too. All right. So everybody, have a fantastic weekend. See you next week with Brittany on Beach Shop Live. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.